Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I'd like to illustrate the Goldman Sachs Abacus transaction less for the controversy than because it illustrates nicely the complex structure that's called a partially funded synthetic CDO. So we start here in the middle with the reference portfolio. In this case, the reference portfolio happened to be subprime residential mortgage-backed securities, a little bit less than $2 billion in notional value. That reference portfolio is parsed into tranches or slices, starting at the bottom with the first loss tranche, sometimes called equity, that attaches at zero and detaches at 10%. And then three classes B, C, and D, running from 10 up to 21. And then here, attaching at 21%, and detaching at 45% is the AAA rated tranche. So the AAA rated tranche has 21% credit enhancement provided by the subordination of the other tranches. What does that mean? That means default losses experienced on the underlying collateral, the residential mortgage-backed securities, are first absorbed here by the subordinated tranches. And 21% in terms of overall diversification is pretty significant. Now, detaching at 45% starts the super senior tranche. Super senior immediately betrays to us this is a synthetic CDO. And in retrospect, these tranches look pretty silly, I think it's safe to say. Because notice, attaching here at 45%, the super senior tranches sit above the AAA rated tranches. In fact, they're technically unrated. They were considered so safe, virtually riskless. So now we look at the essential synthetic CDO. So I'm going to bring this bar in here just to emphasize the fact this was a partially funded synthetic CDO that really directly involved only the AAA rated tranche. And so what we have here is the special purpose vehicle. That's the abacus. Our CDO structure always needs a special purpose vehicle. And in fact, that's at the heart of the CDO. So we have the special purpose vehicle here issuing notes to the investors. In this case, the investors are IKB and ACA. They are investing, purchasing credit link notes here on just the AAA rated tranche. So that green arrow here represents cash paid to the special purpose vehicle that parks that cash in high quality collateral. Now there does need to be another side of the trade here for this invested portion. And that's going to be the protection buyer over here. They are long protection. And in this case, they're long protection by purchasing credit default swaps. So you can see here, these arrows represent the essence of the risk transfer in the synthetic CDO. The protection buyer here is paying credit default swap premiums. That's the solid bar here to the special purpose vehicle. Now let's assume the deal go, performs very well. In other words, there are modest defaults on the underlying residential mortgage-backed securities. Well, then these premiums here are going to be paid, but there's never going to be any corresponding contingent payoff. It's going to be lost money here for the protection buyer. And there, those premiums essentially are going to be returned here to the investors. So that's going to be their note income or their extra yield for assuming the credit risk. If the deal performs well, they receive this extra income. So that's why they enter into it. Now, if the deal goes sour, then there's going to be, as, as illustrated here by the uh, dashed red bar, there's going to be the contingent payoff. The protection buyer here is going to receive a payoff and the investors here are going to lose some or significant portion of their investment principal. So that's the essential credit risk transfer. And we can see now why it's a partially funded synthetic CDO. Partially funded because out of the whole capital structure, in, notes are sold to investors only here on this AAA rated segment, which is less than 20% of the overall structure. It's a synthetic CDO because the special purpose vehicle didn't purchase assets from originator. After all, a purchase would be credit risk transfer, rather rights credit protection by way of the credit default swaps. So it's the use of the credit default swaps here that makes this a, a synthetic CDO. So now one of the hardest parts about this, if you're seeing this for the first time, 
is the fact that we have unsold and unfunded portions of the capital structure. In particular, down here, unsold portions. Now, Goldman may have wanted to sell these classes here to investors and couldn't find them. The deals may be unsubscribed, undersold. And they, but they may have never intended also to sell this first loss or equity portion. So there doesn't need to be uh, an, an investor here for these tranches. But they still provide credit enhancement. In other words, the losses are still absorbed. And it may not impact these, these counterparties operating here, the AAA layer. And then up here for super senior, this was pretty typical we say this is unfunded in the sense that notes were not sold to investors directly on these tranches. Now, there are three other bilateral trades that complicate the Goldman Sachs transaction. So the first is the one I haven't referenced here between Paulson and Goldman Sachs. This bilateral trade really reflects the essence of a derivative transaction. It's a bilateral contract between two counterparties. So what they did is Paulson said, I'd like to buy credit. I'd like to buy, uh, be a protection buyer or go long protection with you here, Goldman on the other side. So Goldman is the protection seller, their short protection. They enter directly into that bilateral contract and it just happens to reference the super senior tranches, tranche. And it does not directly involve the special purpose vehicle. So you see anybody can come along and enter into a bilateral contract, a derivative bet, a side bet really, on the performance of the super senior. So that's the first one. The second one over here is Goldman in purple that originally here was the protection buyer goes and sells this to Paulson because after all that was his original intent. He wanted to be a long protection, apparently as much as possible. So he was really betting against the subprime sector. And then over here, Goldman, doing something that would be characteristic here of the market maker, looked to hedge out this short, uh, short protection position and enters into a separate bilateral trade with ACA. So that's, you can see that's just a separate transaction here where Goldman um, sells to ACA. And ACA here, not as an investor via the special purpose vehicle, but, but rather just as a counterparty here, ends up being a short protection here on most of the super senior tranches. Now, for whatever reason, I don't really know, Goldman didn't manage to sell all of the 45 to 100, but just the 50 to 100, leaving Gold, Goldman here, I'm gonna move this up a little bit, Goldman here was with some leftover residual short protection position on just this 45 to 50 slice. That's where they ended up losing about $90 million. But otherwise, you can see they hedged out both sides, acting pretty, looking pretty much like a market maker there and leaving here with the final sort of the final positions. We have Paulson over here on the left from 21 to 100 who is the protection by our long protection, basically betting against the uh, synthetic CDO or against the capital structure. And he ended up in winning. Now, if it had performed well, he would have lost all that CDS premium payments that he was making. And over here on the right, we have the protection sellers or short protection. We have the investors here who purchase notes. And then we have ACA for the rest of it. They end up betting, uh, really betting in favor of the uh, vehicle because if it had performed well, they would have been collecting that extra yield by assuming the credit risk. So I hope that hope exp helps explain the Goldman Sachs Abacus transaction. Again, a partially funded synthetic CDO. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.